Hi, I'm Jake. I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2, or Pf2. I love Pf2. And as a longtime player of different role-playing games, like uh, VTM, D&D, Mage, Rifts, Deadlands, whatever, I want to share what I've experienced along the way and compare that in contrast to new cool stuff I find. So you have both perspectives. Today we're doing the Sorcerer. You know that because you clicked on the thumbnail. The Sorcerer had a lot of minor changes, like so many things in the remaster. So this is going to take a while. Which you can also already tell from the timeline. Why do we say these things? Yes, you know. Okay. So the first thing is Sorceress Potency. Sorcery. It's a new trait. I'm... Okay. So I could read it, but it's on the screen. I'm not going to read it. Essentially what it does is... When you cast a non-cantrip spell, it actually has to be specifically from your spell slots, so it can't be a focus spell, any damage you do or hit point recovery you do is increased by the, the rank of the spell to the targets or target once, the first time they take damage or gain healing. Cool. Because of the magical power inherent in your blood. That's why. No reason. You just got a power boost. Yay, sorcerers. Now, many bloodlines have changed, but the dragon one and the elemental one have changed a lot. So, aberrant. The blood magic... None of the spells changed, as far as I could tell. So, the blood magic is the, the change. Blood magic for aberrant... It says an ominous pall spills from your mind. Either one target takes a minus one status penalty to will saving throws for one round, or you gain a plus two status bonus to will saving throws for one round. So the negative one to an enemy is the new part. Angelic is the same, because angels are boring. Demonic is also boring, but it increased the plus one status bonus to intimidation checks for one round that you get to plus two. You're welcome. Yeah, how's that for an upgrade? <laughs> I know plus ones matter, but do more than that. Come on. All right, so Diabolic. Similarly, the bonus to deception checks is not a plus one status bonus. Now it's a plus two. You're welcome. That's for one round only. Okay, Dragon Bloodline. Oh, God. All right, so... Blood magic is the same. Bloodline spells are the same. However, and bloodline spells are the focus spells. However, the sorceress gifts, the spells that you get for each rank of spell, are different depending on what kind of dragon you choose. And you have the choice to choose a general kind of dragon or a specific dragon that is now Paizo approved. So all the old dragons are out. Which is a little bit of a shame, because they were easy to keep track of. They were easy to remember. I don't remember these very well, but probably because they're new. All right. So, Draconic Exemplars, the general ones you can choose. And again, they're highlighted on your screen, but I'm going to read them for those of you that are just reading. I mean, listening. Whatever. Accepting reading. Draconic Exemplars. At first level, choose a tradition related to the Dragon Exemplar who influenced your bloodline. You can't change your Dragon Exemplar later. As noted... This affects both your bloodline's features and your sorceress gift spells. If you choose arcane tradition, your spells are arcane. I know, it's so complicated. Your bloodline skill is arcana. Your sorceress gifts are... So the second, fifth, and eighth are for arcane. Blazing Bolt at second. Subconscious Suggestion at fifth. And Quandary at eighth. It's the same as Maze. Next exemplar, Divine. Tradition is divine. Go figure. Bloodline skill, religion. Sorcerer's gifts, second, augury. Fifth, divine immolation. Eighth, divine inspiration. I like divine immolation. I like fire spells. It's just, they're fun. Next draconic exemplar, occult. Tradition of spells is occult. Bloodline skill is occultism. Sorcerer's gifts, second, blood vendetta. Fifth, slither, which used to be black tentacles basically. Eighth, unrelenting observation. Primal tradition. Primal spells. 
Bloodline Skill in Nature, Sorcerer's Gifts, Second Shatter, Fifth Howling Blizzard, Eighth Earthquake. The Shatter I, is a little odd to me, but I, I like the idea of like Primal reclaiming nature from industry. And so in that way, Shatter totally makes sense. Like it's eroding society to bring it back to nature. Now, a whole shit ton more dragon exam examples. Okay, so I'm going to read this next section. It's specific draconic exemplars. If you don't just want arcana or divine or occult or primal, but you know specifically the kind of blood your dragon daddy or dragon mommy gave you, then you could pick from this list. Or if you just like the spell better, then you make up some bullshit in your backstory later. Specific draconic exemplars. Hello. If you want to choose a specific type of dragon as your Draconic Exemplar instead of a category, you can work with your GM to replace the Sorcerer's Gifts listed in Draconic Exemplars with appropriate rank spells found in the various Dragon Spellcasters sidebars for that type of dragon found in Monster Core. The options presented below correlate with these sidebars. In other words, all the work that I just suggested that you do, it did for you here, so I don't know why I suggested it, but whatever. You can choose Adamantine Draconic Exemplar, and Exemplar just means the dragon you're related to, spiritually or physically. In the case of sorcerers, it's usually by blood. Okay, I'm going to take the mouse from you because you are not to be trusted with mice. Because he will swallow them. Hi. Alright, Adamantine. The spell tradition for Adamantine Dragon is primal. Bloodline skill is nature. Sorcerer's gifts, second, shatter, fifth, impaling spike, eighth, earthquake. I like that they're slightly different from the general primal ones. This lets you really customize your spell list if you choose draconic. And that's the main appeal, at least to me. I mean, the blood magic of giving somebody plus one status bonus to AC for a round is also cool. But the main thing is you get to choose your spell list more precisely with this. I like it. All right, anyway, so that was Adamantine. Conspirator tradition is occult, as you could probably guess if you know the Conspirator Dragon. Bloodline skill is occultism. Sorcerer skips second paranoia, which I love. I love that spell. It's messed up. Fifth level synaptic pulse. Eighth unrelenting observation. Diabolic dragon, tradition divine. Bloodline skill religion. Sorcerer's gifts, second blood vendetta. Fifth divine immolation. Eighth canticle of everlasting grief, which is a great name for a spell. Imperial Dragon Tradition is Divine. Bloodline Skill is Religion. Sorceress Gifts, Second Level Share Life. Fifth Breath of Life. Eighth Divine Inspiration. Because you're a dragon god, baby. Fortune Dragon Tradition Arcane. Bloodline Skill Arcana. Sorceress Gifts, Second Invisibility. Fifth Howling Blizzard. Eighth Uncontrollable Dance. Because it's fun, that's why. Horn Dragon Tradition, Primal, Bloodline Skill, Nature, Sorcerer's Gifts, Second, One with Plants, Fifth, Toxic Cloud, Eighth, Desiccate. Mirage, Dragon, Tradition, Arcane, Bloodline Skill, Arcana, Sorcerer's Gifts, Second, See the Unseen, Fifth, Hallucination, Eighth, Disappearance. Omen, Dragon, Tradition is Occult, Bloodline Skill is Occultism, as you could guess. Sorcerer's Gifts are Second Level Status, Fifth Level Wave of Despair, and Eighth Level Quandary. It's such a quandary. Now on to Elemental. Blood magic changed slightly for Elemental. Instead of gaining plus one status bonus intimidation checks for one round, you get plus two. You're welcome. This is where Elemental really shines. Remember before, the Elemental types of damage were either fire or bludgeoning? Like, you can choose earth, air, fire, water. Fire was the only one that was interesting. It was fire. And the damage types of all the others were just bludgeoning. That still is a strong theme here, but there's variations. And that's very nice. So, elemental influences. At first level, choose the type of elemental that influenced your bloodline. Air, earth, fire, metal, water, or wood. You can't change this later. I love that the remaster included more elements. You are granted different spells at certain ranks according to this influence. Air. Sorcerer's Gifts for Cantrip, you get Gale Blast. First is Tailwind, third is Wall of Wind, and sixth is Chain Lightning. And the Blood Magic damage type is Slashing. That's great. 
earth element sorcerer's gifts are for cantrip you get scatter scree first pummeling rubble third earth bind sixth petrify which is just fun and blood magic damage is bludgeoning it's earth come on it makes sense fire sorcerer's gifts cantrip ignition first breathe fire third fireball sixth tree of seasons and all the pods on the tree are summer because that corresponds to fire because that's what we're doing we're doing fire and the blood magic damage type is fire weird metal element sorcerer gi- sorcerer's gifts are cantrip electric arc okay i guess that kind of makes sense first thunderstrike third lightning bolt sixth chain lightning blood magic damage is piercing cool it's different and the last two are bludgeoning that's boring water element sorcerer's gifts cantrip is frostbite first is hydraulic push third is aqueous orb which is fun because you want to drown people because you do sixth level is scintillating safeguard and the blood magic damage is bludgeoning like i mentioned wood element the sorcerer's gifts are cantrip tangle vine first cleanse cuisine third cleanse cuisine all right third level wall of thorns sixth tangling creepers and blood magic damage type is bludgeoning so out of all of these i kind of like metal because it's piercing damage and electricity and that's just kind of fun and there are some specific enemies that like mechanical enemies like if you go to algon star that really suffer from electrical damage and it's nice to just have them in your back pocket fey bloodline the blood magic cloak of ribbons is different now it's not just concealment it's either you gain a plus two status bonus to performance checks for one round or you can become concealed for one round it's just you that's why it's not just concealment it's not any target it's only you or you get a bonus to performance checks it makes sense for Faye. hag oh hag hag is so good i love hags of course you know that witches hags all that stuff all right so Blood magic, retributive, retributive spite. Malice and acrimony take physical form around you. Previously, it had said you deal two metal damage per spell rank with a basic will save to the first creature that deals damage to you before the end of your next turn. Now it's four mental damage per spell rank. Fuck yes. And if no creature damages you in that time, you consume that spite to gain temporary hit points at the beginning of your next turn equal to the spell's rank. Fuck yeah! This is awesome! Such an upgrade! These temporary hit points last until the beginning of your following turn. This is just awesome. I I love this. This Hags. Hags are great. Everybody should be a hag. Imperial Bloodline. Blood magic is now Imperious Defense. Completely different. Raw magic emanates from every cell in your body protecting you. Until the start of your next turn, you gain your choice of either a plus one status bonus to AC or a plus one status bonus to saving throws instead of the old bonus to skill checks. Much fucking better. So much better. Good choice. Yep. Imperial is pretty strong now. As opposed to the way it was before, which was... Now we begin the sorceress feats. There are so many. All right. The really high level ones haven't had anything added to them. Or as far as I could tell, haven't been changed. But there's still a lot of them. So, first level feat, Blood Rising. It's a reaction. Trigger, a creature targets you with a spell of the same tradition as your bloodline. The magic in your blood surges in response to your foe's spell. You generate a blood magic effect you know, even if you are already under the effects of blood magic. The target must be either you or the creature that triggered Blood Rising. If the blood magic effect grants you a bonus to AC or the appropriate saving throw, that bonus applies against the triggering spell. Really cool. If the effect has a duration, it instead lasts until the beginning of your next turn. That's pretty standard anyway. Special, this feat has a trait corresponding to the tradition of your bloodline. I just thought I should read that last part, but it's just stupid. Okay, so the next new feat is tap into blood. One action has the concentrate trait. Requirements, you are benefiting from a blood magic effect. The power in your blood allows you to perform minor feats of magic. You can perform one of the following actions depending on the tradition of your bloodline. I gotta say, I love that with the Oracle and now with the Sorcerer, they have made feats do magic. It's neat. It's just like an extra spell you have because you took a feat. 
instead of just focus spells. It's cool. I like it. So anyway, there's Arcane to find a cult and primal, as you could probably guess. So Arcane, your mind temporarily opens to the secrets of the world. Attempt to recall knowledge. You can use Arcana instead of the skill normally needed for that subject. If you critically fail at this check, you get a failure instead. Think about recalling knowledge on any monster. Just roll Arcana. Fucking awesome. It's just, it feels like bullshit. It really feels like bullshit. You can just use Arcana for any recall knowledge check. Jesus. All right, well, that's awesome. Divine. Whatever divine providence is in your lineage guides you to instinctively move yourself or others out of harm's way. You step or you reposition a target within your reach using religion for the check. Reposition with religion is amazing for a non-athletic type. Weird and great. That will really help for, for movement in combat. It, repositioning is usually done with athletics. You can move somebody around you. Occult. Strange mists or swirling colors hide your movement. You step up to 10 feet. Cool. It's just a way to use an action to avoid provoking reactive strikes because you're a caster. Makes sense. It's useful. That's about it. It's not fancy. Not like arcane. Jeez. Primal. The immense power of nature echoes in your voice. You can attempt a nature check to demoralize a target. Cool. I like it. It's useful. I'd probably always, tar always take arcane just... God, for that reason alone, I would just play an arcane sorcerer. How do I do arcane and get fire spells? How do I do that with draconic? I'm gonna have to look at that later. Neat stuff. Next new feat. Level two. Bleed out. Because you always want to do that when you're in combat. One action has the attack trait requirements. Your most recent action was to cast a non-cantrip spell that granted you a blood magic effect. You channel the residual energy from the last spell you cast into a ranged bloodletting. Make a ranged spell attack roll against the AC of a target within 60 feet. This attack deals persistent bleed damage equal to the rank of the spell you just cast. Just such a fun, flavorful, just extra little ability. There's usually a problem figuring out what to do with the mysterious third action in Pathfinder's Pathfinder 2's economy. That's a cool option. All right, next brand new feat, level two, propelling sorcery. The force of your magic can be used to propel yourself or another. You know the following blood magic effect. And with blood magic effects, you can choose which blood, blood magic effect you use when you trigger blood magic effect. So you gain blood magic, propelling sorcery. You channel your magic outward into a rush of movement. Either you step as a free action or move the target five feet in a direction of your choice. And like with all blood magic, it takes effect if the target failed against the original spell. So if you succeeded on your spell attack or they failed their saving throw, then you can just shift them. That's neat. Next new feat, Energy Ward. It's level six. It's a free action, frequency once per turn. Requirements, your most recent action was to cast a non-cantrip spell that dealt energy damage. You convert energy from the last spell you cast into a protective ward. Until the start of your next turn, you gain resistance to one type of energy. Acid, cold, electricity, fire, force, sonic, vitality, or void. Equal to four plus the rank of the spell. I love that you can choose it. I It's great. I mean, it's a good amount, too. It's just a really good feat. I hate just giving the, the response of, hey, that's good. But it is. Like, it's versatile. And... If you're going to be dealing energy damage with your spells, you're going to take this because it's going to be useful in so many different fights to protect you from whatever messed up thing your GM came up with. Next new feat, level eight, explosion of power. Your magic explodes. You know the following blood magic effect. Blood magic explosion of power is the name of the effect. Raw power explodes outward from you. Each creature within a five foot emanation takes 1d6 damage per rank of the spell you just cast. Basic reflex save. The type of damage depends on the tradition of your bloodline. If you cast arcane spells, you deal force damage. Another reason to do arcane. 
If you cast divine spells, you deal spirit damage. Oh, that's really cool, too. If you cast occult spells, you deal mental damage. If you cast primal spells, you deal fire damage. Why fire? Why? What, poison, maybe? Acid? Okay. Fire. Whatever. It's fire. I would probably talk to your GM and see if you could change those out, depending on your build, in every situation. But force and spirit, you just want to do that anyway. And probably mental. Fire is the only one I'd really have a question about. All right. Next new feat, level 12, Blood Sovereignty. You always sound like a, a proper British person if you say it that way, because that's the way you say it. Blood Sovereignty. You wield blood magic masterfully. When you would benefit from a blood magic effect, you can choose to lose hit points equal to twice the spell's rank as the energy of your blood is drawn out. This takes no extra action, and you benefit from two different blood magic effects you know as a result. The two effects can have different targets. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's neat. It's going to vary depending on what other feats you've taken for your blood magic. Next new feat, level 12, Terraforming Trickery. They had something that had a terraforming name, but it's just very different from this. So it has the Concentrate and Earth traits. It takes one action. You know how to channel the transformative aspects of your blood magic to alter your surroundings. You know the following blood magic effect. Blood magic, terraforming trickery. Either each space adjacent to you becomes difficult terrain, or each space adjacent to you is no longer difficult terrain. This doesn't have any effect or on greater difficult terrain and doesn't remove the damaging effects of hazardous terrain. This is not temporary. It just changes it. At 12th level, I don't know. Are you going to be flying all the time? Like, do you really care? It depends on the person. If you can fly all the time... At level 12, that it doesn't matter. That should have been lower level to be more useful. Oh, well. There are going to be times you can't fly or you didn't memorize fly. Or you're not an ancestry that flies. You don't have a magic item that flies. There's so many ways to fly. By 12th level. Especially since people can do it at night now. 14th level new feat. Blood Ascendancy. Prerequisites Blood Rising. When you would benefit from a blood magic effect through Blood Rising, you can choose to benefit from two different blood magic effects you know. The effects follow the same rules as given in Blood Rising, and each effect can have a different target. As a reminder, Blood Rising is the feat that as a reaction, when a creature targets you with a spell from the same tradition as your bloodline, you can use this reaction to get a blood magic effect. Now, with that 14th level feat, you can get two effects. Reflect Harm is the next new feat, level 14. You can wrap your magic around you like a cloak that causes those who dare to target you with spells to suffer a similar fate. You know the following blood magic effect. Blood magic, reflect harm. Your blood ensures that those who harm you with magic are harmed in return. The first time you take damage from a spell before the beginning of your next turn, attempt a spell attack roll against the creature who casts the triggering spell. On a hit, the creature takes the same amount of and type of damage that you just took. If you critically hit, the creature takes twice the damage. That would be really fun. And there are some horribly destructive spells that are 7th rank or 6th rank. And this is level 14 feet. This is a great time to have this. That's a, that's a good high level feat. And those are all the new feats and all the new changes for Sorcerer. If I missed any, let me know. Don't think I did. I analyzed this pretty closely. Thank you for letting me borrow your eyes, ears, and noses, I guess. Maybe you touched the phone with your nose to move things along. Like, sometimes my hands are busy, so I use my nose to move the... Anyway. If you are a patron, I really appreciate your presence here. It makes me able to do this as rapidly as I've been doing lately. So, thank you. If you want to see the remainder of the Player Core 2, the remaster changes that you haven't seen yet, playlist here. If you want to go back to the Howl of the Wild playlist, it's right here. And like I said, thank you for your presence. I appreciate you. See you again soon.